All right, so it looks like we do have one more uh, follow along here for provisioners, and it is an all resource. I thought it was in another section, but uh, we can do it here. So uh, just notice that I went back and I broke up that provisioners into separate folders there so that when I share this repository, it's going to be easy for you to find all those examples. But let's switch over to this uh, new folder I have here, which is for the provisioner null resource. And let's create ourselves a new main.tf file. So, you know, null resource just keeps cropping up in a lot of different use cases, but one in particular that it's very helpful for is waiting for those status checks uh, when spinning up an AWS instance. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to go to maybe one of our examples like the cloud init, and um, we'll go ahead and grab this one, okay? And so now what I'll do is make my way down to null resource here. And I do not believe I got rid of um, this remote workspace, but just to make it easier, we're just gonna keep it local. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete that out of there. And to simplify this further, I mean, we don't need all this stuff. Well, we just leave it in, it's not a big deal. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll just leave it in because I don't feel like uh, ripping all this out to streamline this. But uh, what we want is to create a new resource called null resource here and just a moment as I have a reference for this. It's not easy to remember, so. Okay, and so what we'll do here is create ourselves a null resource. And I'm just gonna call it status. And it's going to have a provisioner inside of it here. And it will do a local exec. And what it's going to do is execute a command. And this is gonna be the AWS EC2 wait instance status okay check. And so this is used to check whether it is done or not. And so we will have to do some interpolation. And what we need to provide here is the uh, instance ID, right? So down below, what I'm gonna do is type in depends on. And uh, I think it would just type in EC2 instance here. Okay. Um, I don't use depends on very often, so let's just go look it up and check its reference. So depends on Terraform to see an example. And so here it's actually referring to a particular resource. That seems like a good idea to me. So what I'm going to do is go up here and just bring this down onto a new line. We're just going to say AWS instance, my server, because we want that this to provision before this does. And for null resources, we absolutely have to specify that relationship. Okay, so we need to get the um, instance ID here. So I'm going to um, just try to take a single one here. And I think the instance ID, I'm not sure. So let's go look up on the Terraform documentation. So registry.terraform.io. We'll make our way over to providers, over to AWS, into documentation. And we're gonna type in AWS instance. And so what I wanna know is if we do ID, do we get back the ID? I think we would. Oh, uh, well, I can't seem to find it very quickly there, but I'm almost certain that if we do .id, that's gonna give us the instance ID back. So we'll just type in instance my server.id. And I mean, other than the fact that the coloring looks a little bit off, I think that is fine. And so we'll go ahead and try to provision this and see if it works. So we'll do a Terraform validate here because I find the Terraform plan a little bit slow. Actually, before we do that, we have to do a Terraform init. This is a new repository.
I think there's not supposed to be a P here, so I'll remove that. And this will probably fail if we don't bring in the um, uh, that provisioning file there. So we need this user data file here. So we'll just bring it over. Or it's going to complain. I believe it's with a A. So I'll just rename that so it has an A in there. There we go. Okay, back to this file here. We'll try a Terraform init. Or sorry, a Terraform validate. Let's see if it throws any errors. We have one error here. Blocks of type resource are not expected here. So maybe my nesting is incorrect. And it is because I have it nested within uh, a resource. We cannot do that. So let's cut that out. And we will place this resource here at the top level. And we will run that again. And so we have something else failed initiate provider registry HashiCorp null to obtain schema unknown provider. Um, we'll do Terraform init again, since it's asking for it. It's installing the HashiCorp null. I think it's because we added that null resource. So if we go over here to um, the registry so we go back to the top level, we type in null. So I believe this is what controls the null resource here. Okay. So if we want to read a bit more about it, I think it's all there. So it is a separate plugin. So now that we have that, I'm going to do Terraform validate. Okay, looks good. And what we'll do here is go ahead and do Terraform apply. And I'm happy with it because it passed. Well, I guess we should do a plan first. And yep, it's just going to create stuff. So that's all fine. So what we'll do is type in Terraform apply auto approve. And what we're watching for is to see if it's going to wait for the status checks. Because that's what we care about. Okay, so if we go back over here, we're going to have to pay close attention. See what happens. Great, so if we scroll up here, it looks like we hit an error. Um, so it's saying that it does not like our command. Oh, this is supposed to be easy too. Sorry, spelling mistake. So we will, I don't know if this provision, so I'm gonna go refresh here. It did spin up an instance. So we will have to tear down here, so. Or what we could do is just do a Terraform apply replace. That'd probably be easier to do. 
We'll do the AWS instance, my server. And we'll go ahead and write yes, and we'll see if it works this time. Okay, notice that it's executing our status check here. We may be interested to also just try out this command while we're waiting. Up here, if I press the plus, I can open up a new uh, terminal and I can even try it myself here. So notice it's just kind of hanging because um, it's, it's set to wait. So until it's actually uh, working uh, and then it returns, that's when it will proceed. So that's probably how it's working here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this window here. And so it's just waiting until it gets a valid check. So I'm gonna go refresh here Notice that uh, it's initializing, so we'll just wait.
All right, so notice here it says the uh, creation is completed. If I give it a refresh, the status had uh, passed a check. So this null resource worked it as intended. And once this command had completed and this null resource existed, then it was ready. So basically that is null resource. Uh, you can also do triggers with it. So let's take a look here quickly. Um, so a map of arbitrary strings that when changed will force the null resources to be replaced. So that is also something else we can do. Not something we're gonna explore uh, right now, but um, yeah, there you go.